I'm glad to have the opportunity to be here this wonderful Sunday morning. It's bright and early, and one of the earliest things there were in development was hydrogen, the first element of the periodic table, and it's, that's perfect right for our talk. First off, what is molecular hydrogen? Well, here's the molecule here. It's two hydrogen atoms that are bound together to form the molecule molecular hydrogen. It's the Hindenburg. It's the hydrogen gas. It's, it's, we have talked about hydrogen gas as an alternative energy source for many years, using fuel cells. It's three times more energy dense than gasoline. So that's where most of the research of, uh, of hydrogen has been. However, recently, hydrogen gas has been shown to be therapeutic and medicinal. And I, I came across this whole hydrogen gas area about six years ago or so, and I was really astounded. And I wanted to learn more about it, and I started doing more research, more reading more articles, just going through everything that I possibly could. I was an undergrad. My degree was biochemistry. I started continuing reading all these articles. I got more and more excited about it. I did a number of uh, just research projects here and there. And then for my internship to complete my degree in biochemistry, I had the opportunity to go to Nagoya University in Japan. And that was a big deal because Nagoya is, is the fifth most prestigious university there in Japan. It's, it's very well recognized. And I, I had the opportunity to go, to go over there and research with some of the brightest minds in, in the world of academia. And my mentor, Dr. Kinji Ono, he is the vice dean of Nagoya University in the Department of Neurogenetics. And it's very interesting how he got into this whole area of hydrogen gas. And his story is basically he heard a lot of anecdotes and, and other colleagues talking about this whole hydrogen gas idea and its possibility that it could be medicinal and therapeutic. And he being rather skeptical and a very respected scientist in, in, in his field of uh, neurogenetics and all the things he's done at the Mayo Clinic and other places throughout his life, he, he uh, didn't quite want to do the whole hydrogen gas thing because it, it did, it didn't, he was very skeptical and almost sounded a little like pseudoscience or something. And so what he decided to do is, is do an in-house study where he was going to see the effects of hydrogen gas on Parkinson's disease. So he, he took rats and injected them with a toxin to induce a, a Parkinson's disease in them. And then he had, you know, in a controlled trial, he had some of the rats drink uh, water that contains dissolved hydrogen gas, and of course the other rats just drink normal water. What he saw changed his research career because he saw that the rats drinking the hydrogen-rich water, they had totally, to it totally prevented the development of Parkinson's disease. So when he saw that with his own eyes in his own lab, that totally changed his research career, and now he has focused entirely on trying to elucidate what the underlying molecular mechanisms and primary targets of hydrogen gas is. And that's also my primary uh, desire or goal or emphasis is what interests me the most is how is hydrogen gas working? Because we see it in cells, tissues, a animals, humans, all these different things about hydrogen gas. But the question is, how is it actually working? And, and those answers remain elusive. So in this presentation, I'm just going to briefly give you an overview of hydrogen gas and its medical applications, what we've seen so far, how it can be used, and, and that should help you in your practice and how maybe you can use it. So here's some of my, my objectives here. We're, we're basically the basic pharmacodynamics of hydrogen gas, including its role as an antioxidant and its signaling and modulating effects, therapeutic and potential of molecular hydrogen in medical and clinical applications, and the shortcomings and weaknesses of conventional antioxidants and how hydrogen gas can overcome them. So right now, molecular hydrogen has shown to have therapeutic potential in over 150 human and animal disease models. The last count is actually closer to 170 different human and animal disease models. And essentially every organ of the human body, whether the spleen, the pancreas, the brain, the heart, the testes, the placenta, and we'll talk about more of these in detail. The number of research articles on molecular hydrogen are also going exponentially. It really started about 2007. And the reason why is because, you know, there's lots of journals and more and more popping up these days. But journals, as you know, in the peer review are tiered at higher levels. And this is generally based on its impact factor. In, in 2007, 
there were about 50 articles that were published on the medical effects of hydrogen gas and its potential as being therapeutic, but no one really took a lot of interest. The, one of the first articles was in 1975 by Baylor University and Texas A&M showing that hyperbaric hydrogen could, could, uh, has a marked regression of tumors, uh, melanoma tumors, in, in mice. And there's a couple other articles here and there, but not a lot of interest. And, and really, when you think about it, how, how do you really apply hyperbaric hydrogen to your normal patients? Hydrogen gas is extremely flammable. It's a safety issue. So it wasn't really practical. However, what happened, there were only 50 articles or so around 2007, but in 2007, there was a groundbreaking article published in, this, in the journal Nature Medicine, which, as you know, is one of the most prestigious, highly respected journals. It has an impact factor in around 30 or so. And when the article was published in there, which has been cited hundreds and hundreds of times, that really took the biomedical research um, area and scientists by surprise, and now research has just grown exponentially, to now there's actually around 600 different articles that discuss its therapeutic uh, application. It's not here just in Asia, but also here it's growing in the U.S. A number of these universities and, and organizations are also doing uh, hydrogen research. Uh, you see NASA, they're, they're, some of them are actually looking into using hydrogen-rich water. You can take the gas and put it into water, and astronauts can drink that to protect them from the radiation damage during space travel. So lots of easy uses. Bill Melinda University, this is an article that was published in 2013 by Dixon and colleagues. Uh, they say that they, hydrogen has marked therapeutic potential to, to help with the top eight out of the ten fatality-causing diseases listed by the CDC. It's, it's, it's remarkable what, what we're finding so far. So the question then is, how does hydrogen exert these biological effects? Like I said, it has this therapeutic potential in essentially every organ of the human body, but, but how? How's it doing that, right? Well, one of the uh, hypotheses or theories that we've found so far is that hydrogen neutralizes toxic radicals as a therapeutic antioxidant. And this, again, is in 2007. This is the article that I mentioned earlier that was published in Nature Medicine. You can read the title, Hydrogen Acts as, a, as an Antioxidant by selectively reducing cytotoxic hydroxyl radicals. And so they made the high, of course, hydroxyl radicals via the Fenton reaction against C reduction. And it, it was very, very, very profound what they were able to see. But, but note the word selective, because we're going to talk about that. First off, what are free radicals? Just so we understand, these are free radicals have the unpaired electron. They're very reactive. Then you also have the reactive oxygen species, like hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and a number, a number of other ones that are just very strong oxidants that can cause damage, which, as you see here, they can damage RNA, DNA, protein, cell membranes, linked to cell death, and really every disease there is, neurological disorders, inflammatory disorders, cancer, diabetes, and the list goes on and on. How are these reactive oxygen species generated? Primarily in the the mitochondria, primarily the complex one and complex three, the electron transport chain, you have oxygen reduction to superoxide, and then, of course, that can go on to form hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals, and other uh, pro oxidants and prooxidants, which cause all these damage. But notice, most of that is in the mitochondria inside of the cell. 